My next guest is Dave Thompson. Uh, like me, Dave is uh, a member of the Fairfield Gonzales Community Association Cycling Task Force. And uh, that task force is providing feedback to the city on the Vancouver to Fowl Bay Richardson Street bike lane. So Dave, thanks a lot for coming in. Thanks for having me. Okay, uh, so let's start with the, what the city committed to. And what the city committed to was a, uh, what they call an all abilities and all ages network. Uh, to connect uh, to connect to the downtown core, mm -hmm. it's known as a triple A. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so a triple A bike route is where every cyclist from eight to eighty uh, feels safe. So that's the standard that they've set there. Mm -hmm. So there's two ways to get to a triple A standard. Mm -hmm. One is separated bike lanes like downtown. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with them as a cyclist like I am. So the other is a neighborhood bikeway with a shared uh, which has a shared use bikeway with less than a thousand vehicles a day at less than 30 kilometers an hour. Um, this is being proposed for Haltane and Kings Road. Mm -hmm. And as this diagram uh, illustrates, it's basically a bikeway that cars can use. Mm -hmm. So as a cyclist, what do you think about that form of a AAA standard? I think that can be fine as long as the uh, traffic volume and traffic speed are maintained below certain levels. So, so uh, less, this is calls for less than 30 and 500 to 1,000 vehicles a day. Yeah, so the, from what I've read, the, they would like to see one uh, car per minute or less that a cyclist, or one car per block that a cyclist needs to interact with. And below that level uh, is safe, and that's, that's what 500 uh, to a thousand uh, per hour or per day, sorry, would work is, out too. Is less than one car per block, or a car, yeah. a car yeah. per block. Yeah, it's, uh, that's coming straight out of the Vancouver experience. They're, yeah. They're a, a ways ahead of us on this. Well, it's an, but it's, I haven't heard that one before. I haven't heard that measurement before, expressing mm -hmm. it in terms of encountering a car <coughs> in terms of how many blocks. But a car a block, I mean, that's not bad. It's not bad. Um, it's uh, you know it's, it's much nicer as a cyclist to be uh, out there and on a completely separated system like the the Galloping Goose or something like that. But well, that's if you have to get somewhere in the city, yeah, um, which yeah. is the third way to hit a AAA standard, which mm -hmm. is a separated, totally separated bicycle trail like the Galloping Goose. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way of the. Um, so what's being proposed for Richardson is referred to as an advisory bike lane, uh, which doesn't really meet the AAA safety, safety mm -hmm. standard. Mm -hmm. And as the second diagram shows, what it allows for is uh, two-way vehicle traffic in a single lane. Mm -hmm. So on either side are the bike lanes that the cars can use, provided there are no cyclists, to get, to get mm -hmm. past one another if they're, when they're coming at each other. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is a new concept to me. I'd never mm -hmm. heard about it before about a month ago, advisory mm -hmm. bike lane. Um, so as a cyclist, what are your thoughts uh, in terms of having to navigate an advisory bike well, lane? Uh, again, I guess it depends on the traffic volume, but anybody who's, who's ridden in a, uh, a bike lane where people can open their doors up uh, realizes the, the danger of that. And I've been involved in, in uh, dooring type uh, collisions. Um, the other thing that worries me about it is that uh, there's one lane in the center of the road for cars and when cars are coming towards each other, uh, the, uh, the idea behind an advisory bike lane is that they're going to swerve out into the bike lanes. And swerving into the bike lanes, we, we see problems with, with car drivers not doing shoulder checks when they're turning right and I imagine we're also going to see problems with them not uh, shoulder checking when they're easing into the bike lane uh, to avoid a collision. Uh, the city of Vancouver, I think it is, um, has said that uh, uh, you need very low traffic volumes for these things, and I think that they haven't really been tried extensively in other places in North America. When Vancouver says low, what would low be? I think below 500. To, for an um, advisory bike lane? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was higher. I could be, I could be mistaken about that, but they are a pretty new 
Uh, yeah, new concept. New concept. They yeah. haven't really been tried much elsewhere. Well, one I think in Western Canada is up in Gibsons. That was the mm -hmm. that, that was very the first short one. one. I think. Isn't What's it? that? A very short one. I think. It's a very with short low one. volumes again. I, I think under three hundred. Under three hundred. For that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, for me, um, getting squashed when I'm cycling is my biggest fear. Mm -hmm. But the other one is getting doored. Mm -hmm. And the concern that I have, again, you can, the diagram that was up there a couple of seconds ago, uh, shows that they, they allow a 0.5 meter, uh, basically one and a half feet mm -hmm. to allow for doors opening. And I've never seen a foot and a half wide mm -hmm. door on a, on a car, right? Mm -hmm. I, there's, there's too many drivers that just, uh, or parked cars, when the drivers get in, they just throw the door open, and some of them they're they're sizable side, you know, they're, they're sizable mm -hmm. doors, right? Mm -hmm. And so then that forces you to quickly would quickly uh, go into the. My apologies. Would force you to quickly go into the uh, vehicle lane without having a chance to look. You'd mm -hmm. just be forced out into mm -hmm. the vehicle lane. You swerve or hit the door or hit the brakes hard enough to lose control. To lose control. Yeah. So for me, um, maybe I'm being premature in my judgment on this advisory lane, but mm -hmm. basically it simply doesn't meet AAA standards and we were promised a mm -hmm. AAA network and so mm -hmm. I'm just saying, you know, forget it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I look at the, the target group for the, uh, for the uh, AAA network cycling facilities. And the target group is known as the interested but concerned about safety group. Mm -hmm. Apparently it makes up 60% of non-cyclists. So these are people mm -hmm. who don't cycle, mm -hmm. but they're potentially cyclists. And um, so my notion is, so why would you bother building anything but a AAA safety standard network if your primary target the, the primary concern of your primary target is safety. Like for mm -hmm. me, it just doesn't compute. Yeah, it, I guess it remains to be seen whether uh, that kind of facility can attract new riders. So there are experienced cyclists who seem to weave in and out of traffic, no problem, not concerned. And then there's a, that other 60% that you mentioned that the needs one, that to feel 1%, safe. That 1% is known as the fearless group, yeah. right? But that's 1% of cyclists. Fearless or reckless. And reckless. I've been part of that group myself. Uh, at times, but uh, I, if I think of my own kids, uh, would I encourage them onto a street like that? Probably not. I think we'd pr probably looking at some sort of alternative to going there. Um, and I think also that the BC, uh, the government, the provincial government has issued um, uh, cycling guidelines, and they're not convinced that the that this type of facility is a AAA facility. It's no, my understanding. Yeah, anything I've read so far says that this is definitely not a AAA. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think that the city council, when it identified Richardson as uh, a trip, as a bike route, wanted it to be a AAA specifically. Right. Um, yeah. So, um, <coughs> well, you know, you go back to the um, some of the some of the uh, targets that the cities. So the cities. Uh, Official community plan has established, uh, they, they, they describe them as bold transportation mode share targets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know a, a, mode, a mode share is basically you go from one mode, i.e. car, to a, to a bicycle mm -hmm. and or to a bus and so on. So here's the, here are the figures here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, they're targeting 25% of all trips are going to be by bike in urban areas such as Victoria mm -hmm. by 2038. 25% mm -hmm. of all trips uh, within, uh, okay, you know, but we got 20 years, mm -hmm. but according to the uh, 2011 data, we're now at for 4%. Yeah. So it seems to me that we're going to have to put out all the stops to attract mm -hmm. those, what are they called again? Concerned, uh, mm -hmm. interested, interested, but concerned group. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to give them, like the gold standard, if yeah. you will, to get them onto these bikes. Yeah. Um, so a lot of non-cyclists are going to have to switch to bicycle mode, and mm -hmm. it seems like a bold target. For me, uh, it seems like a very bold target, and mm -hmm. it was going to. It's going to require a very bold network design 
of all of uh, having them all AAA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to require a kind of a, a dense network so that people can actually look at the various destinations because not everybody's traveling into downtown. Uh, people are going to be making trips to Cook Street Village, um, to the community center, church, shopping, uh, and we'll we'll need to be able to accommodate all those types of trips. Uh, as well as the commuter trips downtown in order to hit um, a target like that, which is what, six times or more what we're, what we're currently at. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so it's going to have to be a network approach. We're going to need, uh, right now we've got uh, four bike lanes downtown, and, and the idea behind Richardson and Haltane is that they're going to extend the downtown lanes out uh, into other areas. And sorry about that. Uh, we're also going to have to have other directions. We're going to have to be constructing these uh, bike lanes pretty quickly, and, and a lot more of them. But as you point out, the the goal here with the there's four on the table. You mm -hmm. know, Haltane, Kings Road is one. Mm -hmm. Richardson's another. There's a street Kit Kitma, or there's a street, yep. and there's a fourth one. I forget where. And, uh, but essentially, they're. Uh, uh, going to be put into place to connect, you know, mm -hmm. the, the community centers, uh, mm -hmm. the shopping areas, the uh, churches and whatnot to to the downtown core, which is you know taking shape. But again, they're all uh, they're all um, you know separated by claims. Mm -hmm. um, so in Richardson, the the city has proposed a lot of diverters and and mm -hmm. traffic calming measures to reduce volume. And get Richardson through, uh, and get Richardson through traffic onto the arterial roads of Fairfield and Oak Bay. Um, mm -hmm. So, for example, what they've got on Richardson is um, coming from the uh, coming from the east. You're coming from mm -hmm. Fowl Bay. I'm sorry, you're coming from Oak Bay. Yep. And as you know, McNeil turns into Richardson at Fowl mm -hmm. Bay. So, what they've got at Fowl mm -hmm. Bay uh, for this westbound traffic. Mm -hmm. um, is a diverter. They'll be no longer be able to come through mm -hmm. at, at Richardson. They'll have to turn left, they'll have to go north, they'll have to go south. Mm -hmm. And uh, ultimately, uh, they've designed it in a, in a very interesting way, that they'll go north, they'll go south, but they won't be able to immediately get back onto Richardson. Mm -hmm. uh, because it'll be a waste of time because there's another diverter just two more blocks down. Mm -hmm. Or there's another diverter, uh, so there's one at Richardson, I'm sorry, there's one at Fowl Bay, then there's another one at Madison, mm -hmm. and then there's another one at St. Charles. So yeah. in an eight block stretch, you've got three diverters mm -hmm. that are going to mm -hmm. force you off of Richardson. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems to me that if you just threw in a few more diverters, we mm -hmm. could set the stage for a, uh, a shared bikeway like mm -hmm. Haltane, mm -hmm. uh, AAA standard, uh, mm -hmm. without having to, f you know, fool around with yeah. these advi without fooling around with these advisory bike lanes. Yeah, I think that um, you could, if you if you put in a few more diverters, you could get it to the point where car drivers are going to think it's not worth my effort uh, to go down here. It's easier to go on Oak Bay Avenue. I actually use uh, Richardson myself now when I drive the car to go downtown, and I can get downtown uh, uh, to within a block of my wife's office without hitting a single red light. Uh, so for me, I really enjoy using that as a cut through, but I realize I am driving through other people's neighborhoods uh, as I do this, and I'm, I'm okay with being pushed out onto Oak Bay Avenue. It might take me an extra 45 seconds or a minute to get downtown, two minutes on a bad day. Um, I think, I think that having more diverters in there would make it unpalatable for people to, to try to use Richardson uh, and would put the uh, traffic on the, on the main arterials. And I think it would make it safer and more comfortable for that 60% that of people who currently don't ride but would consider it. I like, yeah, the interest it uh, mm -hmm. brought uh, a little... Not concerned. so many diverters on the eastbound direction though. I think coming right in off of, off of Cook off, Street. Off of Cook Street, there's one, yeah. and then St. Charles. Yeah, we met with the city officials uh, a couple of nights ago, and I was actually quite impressed with the way that they had mm -hmm. thought through uh, getting this, uh, get, keeping them on Richardson. Mm -hmm. Dave, unfortunately, we're out of time, and I'm going to have to mm -hmm. thank you for coming in today. Oh, well, thanks for having me. Hey, 
My, my pleasure. Thanks yeah. for coming in. Thanks. Um, up next is a citizen reporter brings us an interview with author Matthew Legge, who is launching his new book called Are We Done Fighting? Building Understanding in a World of Hate and Division.